Hey guys, welcome to a new video. In this video here, we're going to talk about GitHub Copilot. So GitHub just recently released the Copilot here, which is basically just an AI programmer that can like recommend different kind of functions. You can just write a function. Uh, you can start off writing a function and it will then do suggestions of like what do you want to implement. You can also just write a comment and then it will make suggestions of the implementations of the specific comment. Uh, that you made in your program so this can be used for a lot of different kind of things this is really cool it will help you a lot when you're programming uh, yourself you don't need to like check stack overflow for some different kind of, kind of uh, uh, like implementations of functions you can basically just write a comment and then you can get a suggestion of the in implementation of that specific function but first of all remember to hit the subscribe button and bell notification under the video here only 10 percent of you guys watching these videos here are actually like, subscribed to the channel it's just a single click and it really helps me and a youtube channel out in a massive way you can also become a member of the channel if you want to support the channel with a small monthly fee everything will go to create more and better quality content here on the channel also if you're a member of the channel i can help you out in your own projects if you have some, some problems i can help you out and give some guidance if you're a member of the channel so thank you guys so here we're just going to run over the website here and then we'll jump into visual studio code i'll show you how you can set it up in visual studio code and then i'll show you some examples of what this ai programmer from google Co uh, google uh, copilot here is actually like capable of this is really cool so here we can see we have your own like your own ai programmer it will speed up your process a lot so when you're going to make your own programs and so on like when you're just coding it will save you a lot of time you don't need to google like how to how to get like um, the number of days between like two different kind of dates or how to get the intersection of two arrays and so on. You can basically just write a comment and then it will implement the code by itself. So it will save you a lot of time as you're going to see. So good up code pilot here, use the OpenAI, uh, OpenAI codex to suggest code uh, and also entire functions in real time right from your editor. So basically just when you're writing out your, your code in your editor, it will act like make suggestions on the way and then you can just tap it and it will act like um, just use that code. We can also like just write comments, get entire functions and so on. Down here we can see that they actually like make some different kind of like examples. So here we can see an example with Python. I'm just going to give you some examples with Python. This can be used for like JavaScript and so on as well and all those languages. But here we can just basically just see that we can just define this function here. We can write a comment of like what do we want this function to do and then Copilot here act like implements this whole function down here at the bottom. So here we see that this function wants to parse expenses. So parse the list of expenses and return the list of triples. So we have date, value, and currency. And then we can basically just ignore lines starting with uh, like the hashtag. And then we can just specify some other different kind of like details for a function. Then Google Cope, uh, like then GitHub Copilot here will like, like make a suggestion of the code to implement this actual function here uh, that you wrote a comment up here at the top. So train a billions of lines of code github copilot here turns natural language prompts into coding suggestions coding suggestions across dozens of languages so it's, it's supported by multiple languages this is kind of like um the breakthrough within like natural languages world we already talked about like dolly how we can generate images from dolly if you want to check that out definitely check that video out here on my channel it is just we can basically just have a command prompt or like a prompt where we pass in some text and then that text will be like generate if that text will actually like generate images of that text that we passed through our uh, our model or our Dolly model. So also have videos about that here on the channel. So the breakthroughs within natural language process is just really crazy uh, right now. And this will save a lot of time for a lot of programmers out um, in the whole world. So focus on solving bigger problems, spend less time creating by a uh, boilerplate and, and so on, and also repet repetitive code patterns. So a lot of the code that you're probably using in your programs is just like kind of like standard code you probably don't know or like don't remember how to actually like implement this function how can we get the like the, the sum of a vector or something like that and then we can basically just write it as a comment and it will make suggestions based on the ai that has trained on on all the code from github so basically like github has a lot of code of course you know that so basically just github have have a lot of code and then they basically just trained this um, ai model to do suggestions on different kind of inputs so the inputs is actually like either comments or like we start off writing a function um, in our editor. The nice thing here that everything just works in our editor. We just scroll down here, see the different kind of like examples, but we can also see the different kind of like editors that is supported right now. So we have Visual Studio, we have NeoVim, we have Visual Code, which we're going to use, and then we also have JetBeans IDE. Uh, I'm definitely sure that there will be more like, um, there will be more editors like supported in the future and so on, but these are like the initial, initial ones. 
but as now I can like see how to set it up you can basically just if you want to try it out you can just start your free trial trial try it out I think it's like around ten dollars after the trial but there's a free trial for the next uh, 60 days I think but here we can just explore the documents here we can see how we can get started with github copilot and visual studio code I just went into this guide here or this tutorial and also like how to set it up in visual code if you want to do it in visual studio JetBeans, or something like that you can just press that guide so basically here I just went into Google uh, github copilot you just need to install the extension so you'll just go into the extension tab here over to the left so we have extensions and then you'll basically just uh, search for uh, github copilot So basically here we just have github copilot and then you'll basically just install it and then we'll install the, all, install the extension here uh, to your visual code uh, visual studio code um, environment so here we can see we get the extension then we can actually like just sign into github copilot through visual code so we need to ex you need to like kind of like access it through your own github account so there, there will actually like be um, a connection and then down here you will up get, just get out a browser link you will just do uh, you will get a request from github and then you'll basically just authorize that visual studio code can actually like, use your github account and then everything is then set up you just need to install the extension could sign in with github and then you, you're basically good to go then you'll get this uh, then you'll actually get this tab down here at the bottom where you can de de deactivate copilot if you don't want to use it so let's now just jump into the visual studio code here and see some couple of examples from github uh, copilot so first of all, we're just going to write out a function and then it will actually just auto fill that function when we're going to run it. Down here at the bottom, we can see that Copilot or is actually like running right now. And then we're just basically, we're just going to type our function. So we're going to define our function, get current. And then we can also see here that now we actually get suggestions of like the most common uh, function starting with this name here. So that is also really good to know. But here we just want to get the current date. So here we just want to get the current date and we just create our function. So first of all, it's going to import date time and then it's just going to return date time dot date time dot now. And then we can just go to the next suggestion, the previous suggestion, or we can just accept by pressing tab, or we can actually like open up the GitHub Copilot co uh, window here in Visual Studio Code and get some different kind of solutions. So here we can see we get two different kind of solutions over here to, to the left. Uh, we can see two different kind of solutions. So we get year, month and date. And then we can accept those solutions by just pressing up here. You might actually get more solutions up here at the top, but we can see that duplicates are actually like hidden. But this is fairly a simple function to do. But if you don't know how to get the current date or like what module to actually like import, this is also really good and intuitive to use. So we're just going to accept the, the, the last solution here. So we're just going to press accept solution. It's going to import the date and return the date time. So basically here we're just going to verify that this acts like a function that works so though here we're going to print out and also right now it just should suggest that we want to print out the current date so this is just really really cool it's going to save you a lot of time it's going to like acts like depend on the code that you've written before it's going to make suggestions based on what other programmers are usually doing you will get good um, you will get good really good implementations and also really like efficient implementations you won't really get it you won't really get any like box and something like that of course you need to test out the different kind of functions and you also need to go like go through it and see if this is act like what you want um, in the solution that you uh, that you want to do or like what you want to do inside of your function so here we're just going to hit tab and now we're going to print the current date we're just going to run the program and then we're going to see the current date down here at the bottom which we can see is the correct one if we look down at the at the uh, at the um, at the bottom right corner here so this is actually like a really really nice um, ai programmer that can be used for a lot of different kind of things so now we're just going to write a comment here and actually like see what suggestions do we, do we actually like get so here we're just going to have a function where we can get the sum of two lists so function to get uh, the sum of two lists and then we're gonna actually basically just go down here, hit Control Enter, and we'll get the suggestions for uh, this function, which can return the sum of two lists that we pass to it. So here we can get the sum of list. We get this. Uh, we here we have two different kind of arguments. So we have list one and list two. Then we will have a sum list, and then we basically just have a full running through the length of the first list. And then basically here we're just appending the sum of the i element. So we're just going to sum the elements uh, element wise in the list, and then we're going to return that sum list. We can also see the other different kind of um, suggestions here. It's kind of the same, but here we just have like a total sum. So this will be sum between two lists element wise, and this will be the total sum of all the elements in the list. 
So we're just going to go with the first one up here. So basically we have to list and then we will turn to some list. So basically if we just print here, we're just going to print the get, um, get sum of lists. And then basically here it also not right now we can see that we get a suggestions of the input arguments to our function. We're just going to hit tab of this one here and then we're going to print the results. So we will basically just sum some all the elements here in our two list element wise and then it will print that new list. So here we can see the sum of one plus four is five. The sum of two plus uh, two plus six, five is seven and also three plus six is indeed nine. So this is actually like really cool. We get suggestions for even like the arguments to just test out these functions if they actually like work. And also we can just get a lot of different kind of like suggestions of like how we can implement it. This is just really easy. Maybe if you were to implement this function here yourself, you didn't remember like how to do it. You can even like do more complex functions. These are just really exam simple examples to show you guys like what this AI here uh, can do and how we can actually like, get these different kind of suggestions. But you can make more complex functions. This function here will maybe take like a search on Stack Overflow. You'll scroll down a bit to, to find the best solution or like the best implementation. And then you'll need to copy paste that, uh, change some different kind of like parameters and so on. Uh, or like the lines of code, maybe do some adjustments. And then even though even though you have done that, you're not sure that that, that is the most or like the best solution that you can get uh, to a function. But all of that could maybe take like five, 10 minutes for a bit more complex functions where here in GitHub, uh, co GitHub Copilot, you can basically just write your comment. You can start off with writing out your function name, your input arguments. If you want to have more input, input arguments up here at the top, uh, then you can basically just uh, pass that into it and then you can just get suggestions in maybe like 10 seconds 15 seconds or something like that so it's really efficient you can use it for a lot of different kind of things maybe just to change it up and see if it's able to do some other different kind of things we're just going to uh, delete this one here and then we can basically just we can even see that now when we're writing out our function name we can also we also get a suggestions suggestion under here but here i just want to like uh, delete this so sum of lists and then i will basically just um, add another list here as an argument and see if it's actually like, capable of doing that. So here right now we don't get any suggestions. We can hit control enter to see if we get something. So here again we can just see that we get another suggestion. So now we just get a sum of list. So now we'll get it of three different kind of list. And basically it just do it just does the same. It just adds all the elements in the free list together. But now we can even see like if we have implemented function, we want to make adjustments to our functions it is also capable of doing that. Maybe if we change it to just one list here. So we just call it lists and then we hit control enter. Then we can see here that we get the list. We have the sum and then it will basically just run through I in the list. So we'll basically just run through all the elements in the list and it will just sum it up. So this will basically not sum like list of list, but it will sum all the elements in a single uh, list. Here we can accept the solution. We will get it into our code and then we can just use it later on. And then basically if we just run write print get uh, sum, again, we will just get a suggestion of the input argument that we have. So here list and then now we don't get any suggestions but this will basically just be one list now we get a suggestion and we can print that out and then we should get all the elements here summed up together so again you can just see how fast we can write code we can meet you can even like create more complex functions you can make api calls you can even like have a function uh, just saying like uh, get the price of a cryptocurrency and it will actually make a function of that we can just try to do that so here we're just going to define or like we get the price of crypto cryptocurrency and then we can hit control enter uh, we need to go to the next line here so hit control enter here and we will get the different kind of solutions so here we can see it import request it import json and then we can actually like also use uh, github copilot here to access apis we can get like url requests we can then access the data through that we can just return that and as well so here we can just accept the solution we can just call get price of cryptocurrency we just pass in the cryptocurrency that we want to get the price of it will go into this coin market cap api and also get the current price of that cryptocurrency and then it will basically just uh, return that with uh, with the price in usd so it can also be used for access and apis we can use it for a lot of other different kind of things so this is just really cool i'm really I'm really mind blown about like what this AI program here is actually like, capable of, and e even like it's only recently that they add that they actually like made this uh, AI program here available for the public. 
but again this is going to save a lot of time in the future it will just keep improving the more people use it the better the ai will just get like the more data the better the ais will get and this will save you guys tons of times in the future and also a lot of time not not debugging your code you can't really find like where is the index error like why doesn't my like arrays uh, match together or something like that this is just really really cool even you, you can you can even like use it maybe in the future you can use it for different kind of modules so you can just import modules it will make suggestions for modules and so on but i guess like they need more data to train the ai programmer and that and then basically at the end like the end here uh, like the end goal here is basically just like write a pdf file or like write a text file and then just pass that text file into the ai and then the ai will basically just return your program with all of the code to act like uh, to act like do that uh, to, to do that or like implement that uh, text that you're just given to the AI. So this is just a really exciting future that we're going ahead inside of like programming, like for programming and also like AI and how we can combine AI and programming and just make our programming more efficient. I hope you guys can use this for a lot of different kind of things and it will also save you, save you guys a lot of time when you run your, run your open programs um, and so on. So this is only the start, it's only going to get better. So thank you guys for watching this video here and remember to subscribe button and bell notification under the video. And also like this video here if you like the content and you want more in the future. It just really helps me and YouTube channel out in a massive way. I'm currently doing a computer, computer vision tutorial and a, like a deep learning tutorial, AI tutorial and so on. Where we just talk about like basic image operation in the deep learning tutorial. We talk about neural networks, neural network basic like fairy how we can create neural networks ourselves and so on so if you're interested in one of those tutorials i'll link to it one of one of them up here or else on the next video guys bye for now